Hello everyone, it's Sandro Stefanucci from Abstract Homes and Renovations. Um, we're going to do a quick tutorial here on the ICFs as we um, as we move into the 21st century here. We um, we are constantly using here at Abstract Homes is ICFs for all our foundations now. And a few things that I've learned, like techniques that you don't necessarily get on the installation videos that you might uh, watch that Nudira has out there. So uh, first thing is, uh, I mean, a lot of people now are putting gravel, three quarter inch clear crush on their base. It's important when you're using a monopore system like we are now, and you might ask, what is a monopore system? And the monopore system has legs built into uh, the bottom of the blocks. So it's actually a footing and you can adjust those legs and, the, and we've got this bag here that creates the footing on it. So we don't have to do two separate pours. We just do one pour. That's what the mono is about. So back to the rock. We'll level this thing out, and I really try to dial this in and get it as flat and straight as possible because it, it's a lot better for the legs later on. It's adjusting, um, you're not going to have way different depths in your in your footing for one. So that is. So you lay your bag down. Typically, you'll lay your bag down on the rock first, and then put your um, put your um, ICF blocks on it. Center your bag. It can be a bit tricky, but. Um, that's the best way to do it. And then we have steel on this particular one. Uh, there's three rows of 15M down below. A bit challenging to get that in there. We had to lift up the walls after we got them uh, leveled up a bit and slid them underneath the legs. Um, there's other ways you can do it. You can go a long ways and try to slide them underneath. Um, so that step, I don't, th I don't think you should put it on before you put the blocks on just because the bag is harder to move the bag around if you need to adjust the bag later on. So lining up the bag, um, and get your get your uh, footing on. Put your steel inside for your footings, and then and then from there you go and shoot your your foundation uh, level all the way around so you can get it get it in pretty good place. And once you square this up, so this particular one we squared it first. We got the corners. Now the, it, the videos that they show, they nobody does this corner brackets that we bracing that we've done. So once we once we brace it, we square it up. We put these corners on. We put like three quarter inch plywood, four, sh four foot sheets. Kept it, um, you know, so this really holds the corners in because typically they just show you bracing on the inside of the walls here. And in my experience, it's, it hasn't been very straight. I've noticed that they've gone out a bit. The blocks are not always exactly the same. If you can get this thing braced on here, it's not an ex much time in order to do that. It keeps the whole foundation square. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, because they do go out, especially on higher walls, they'll go out for sure. I can guarantee you they will. So that's it. So we brace this up here. There's the ribbing in here, as you know, screw it to that. You've got this thing, uh, once you've got it braced up and you got it square, then you can run your string lines. We put screws in, line it up with our wall. We string it all the way along and then we check it probably about four different times with, uh, with our transit here. A, a level and um, and now we're, we're ready to pour so I, I just go over one more time and, and just, just check it and, and it's all in the flat line pretty much all the way around there's little little discrepancies in the foundation the tops they're not exactly the same height all the way around but uh, we try to dial it get it as close as you can it'll save you a big hassle later on in that and um, what can I say? That's it for today. Thanks.